Hey folks, I feel compelled to do this video. I've felt compelled to do it for a while. I've touched on some of these things. Uh, people aren't really touching on a lot of the things that they need to be touching on. We as the human race are not realizing a lot of things that we really need to realize. Uh, we've just come through this virus thing. It's just a whole lot of deception. Uh, so I want to talk to you. Um, I'm going to start this out by trying to make everybody aware biblically of why something like this virus thing could have happened, why people could have been fooled into voting for somebody uh, while there's a certain segment that they just see clearly on many things and then there's a certain segment that can't see past the nose on their face. And there's a reason why, why for that. So I'm going to talk about a lot of things. This is going to be a long video. Uh, if one person watches it start to finish and says, well, hey, you're crazy, crazy old man. And then goes back and listens and 10 years from now starts thinking, hey, maybe that crazy old man was right. Maybe a year from now, maybe a month from now. Then I've done, then this video served its purpose. Uh, and, I, and I feel compelled to do it. So I've done the right thing, even if there's zero people. Um, a lot of confusion in this world. Um. A lot of confusion about God, Christ, the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of confusion about uh, are you a boy, are you a girl? Uh, it's just confusion everywhere. It's confusion in science. It's just confusion everywhere. Well, I'm going to tell you that the Bible told us that this was coming. And as a, uh, an old man, looking back to any time up to me probably being 45 years old up to that point, uh, if you told me what was going on today, I would have told you, you are crazy. You need to get up out of here. You've done lost your damn mind. Um, and I probably would have been 50, told you the same thing when I was 50. I was, you've done lost your mind. Uh, but I knew, I, I knew it was going to come because the Bible told us it was. Um, I, I often think and ponder and I encourage you go read Romans chapter one and then go read the, uh, I believe it's in first or second Thessalonians about the great deception. Uh, it's talking about Satan deceiving you, but most importantly, that gets skipped over in church. Uh, it talks about God deceiving you. God choosing to deceive, to deceive you. Uh, that scares me to death, and it should scare you to death. Let me tell you something. In this day and age, if you're sick, sometimes the last place you need to be is in a doctor's office or a hospital. Let that sink in. And if none of that registers with you, you've probably lived under a rock or maybe you are you're were too young a couple of years ago to see what was going on with all the mess that went on with the world. 
that something's going on. If you don't understand that statement, maybe you need to do a little bit of investigating on your own, which I choose you to do with everything that's said here. I don't want you to, I'm not asking you to believe what I tell you, but, but my hope is you'll go and investigate about some of these things I'm telling you. Uh, if you're seeking God, a lot of the time, the last place you need to go is to a church house or a mega church. Let that sink in. Just let that sink in. Today, if you get sick, in many instances, the last place you need to be is with a doctor or in a hospital. If you're seeking God, sometimes when a, the last place you need to be is in a church house or a mega church. That should, that should scare you. Back when I was a kid, the first place you would go, up until I was 40 or 50, you run to a hospital, you run to a doctor, you get sick. You, uh, you seeking God, you run to a church. Uh, the church part has been going on since well before I turned even 40. Uh, that was the first thing that was attacked in this blinding thing. Uh, this blinding is put forth by God himself, not Satan. You, you're not going to go into church and sit down and the preacher preach on. There's so many of you that God says right here in Romans chapter 1, he doesn't like you. He doesn't want to live with you. Therefore, he says he will blind you. You're never going to hear it. What you will hear is a bunch of fake, phony, phony, fake, false Christ love. Uh, well, accept everybody. Accept everything. <clears throat> Which is nowhere in the Bible. And you are not to be as accepting as God is. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you that. You, you can no more understand another man's heart that your own heart, the Bible says, is deceitful among all things to you. So how are you going to understand another man's heart to come in and accept somebody that biblically or morally or ethically is deemed a crummy person, an evil person? Be careful what you open up and let inside your door. Something wicked this way comes. Be careful. Uh, God knows man's heart. You don't. I don't. But see, you're never going to... These things in church you're not going to hear. Here's, here's typically what you're going to hear. You're going to hear... Uh, we need to start, we love these people, but we don't love what they do. Really? Think real hard. There are some things that are so evil you don't love the people. And you shouldn't love the people. Right? Because there's some things that God don't love. There again, I'll take you back. Just go read Romans chapter 1. Just one chapter in the Bible. Uh, there are churches you go into today that uh, we've called them the prosperity gospel churches. They want you to prosper. God, we just want God exists for you, baby. And get yourself right with God. Give this church a hundred dollars. You're getting seven hundred dollars back. You know, all lies. By fools, by greedy fools that are blinded themselves, that God has blinded them because God himself does not want to live anywhere around them. Go read Romans chapter 1.
be careful out there, people. Well, God wants me in church. Really? How do you know what God wants for you in this time? Maybe 50 years ago, maybe 80 years ago. Look around you. There's women in the pulpit. Uh, the Bible specifically forbids that. Well, God said, oh, a brand new God. Say your God is. But Christ, the God, the God of Isaac and Abraham and Moses, now, you know, that ain't the same God. No, that's not, that's not, there's a new God today. He's an accepting one. He's, uh, his real name is Lucifer, the devil, or Satan, the light bearer, the false light bearer. That's what so many people are falling into today. Go read Romans chapter 1. There again it talks about people living in a form of godliness, walking around with smiles on their face, acting pleasant, saying things like God bless you to heathen, something else we're specifically forbidden to do, yet they say God bless you to everybody. They don't care because they don't have a God. Their God is Satan. They're going to continue with the lies. Maybe you are too. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, well, it doesn't say that. But go look. It says, never wish a bad person, a heathen or a non-believer, God's speed. Well, that's not just different than God bless you. No, it's not. That was the expression that was used uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. That was what God bless you. That was how you said God bless you. You'd say God speed. Learn, educate yourself, develop some uh, knowledge so you can gain some wisdom. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, now, we're going to get on to what happens when you start really understanding what in the hell is going on, which draws you closer to God. And there's a couple of types of people with concerns to that, I believe. And I'm telling you, I believe that this uh, I believe that there's a couple of types of people and there may be more types of people but I put them in two classifications that when you really get open and you start really realizing what is going on what's going on in to, with concerns to the people you've been taught all your life to run to for help to steer clear of them when you're in distress uh, when you start developing that kind of knowledge and building that type of wisdom you will be attacked you will be attacked spiritually uh, inwardly in the depths of who you are you will be attacked it will be spiritual warfare and you will be attacked in another type of spiritual warfare which is the warfare, uh, the, the spiritual warfare that's inward will get you to start doubting, will get you to uh, go out here and do wrong things, will get you to hurt your body, will get you to hurt someone else, or a whole host of things. Will get you in trouble. The outer influences and the people that generally come to you as good people uh, it's a rarity that the bad people come uh, once you open up and you realize uh, people will come to you in the name of God, in the name of science, in the name of something. And usually a lot of time, not usually, but many times they are in an authority position 
and they will come and they will cloud your judgment, cloud your brain, lock you up, uh, give you a drug saying it's going to help you, but in the, in the end it's helping kill you. Uh, do things like give your children inoculations that will give them Dow syndrome or other types of problems, uh, allergies uh, for a lifetime, all sorts of things. But, but, but they won't give you anything good. Uh, it'll work through the person to bear false witness against you to start casting false allegations to maybe get you thrown in a jail or a prison. It's a whole host of things. And you can spot these people a mile off because they, all the while they're claiming God and have a form of godliness about who they are and project that to other people. Uh, at least a little thing happens to them. My name's going to go bad. My credit's going to go bad. I'm worried about my job over here. I've been in this career this many years. Uh, I've had this house for uh, 22 years. I'm fixing to lose it. And they will immediately place all those things. And it may be their health. It could be a whole host of things. But they will immediately place those things above the God they claim to love. And God has blinded them. Those are the specific types that God has blinded. Now we'll talk a, little, a couple of minutes about me. Uh, I am a selfish, greedy, dirty, rotten, thieving liar. Really, I'm a murderer because I thought about it in my head. And God says, if you think about it in your head, you've already done it. So I've done everything. Uh you have too, whether you'll admit it or not. But I'm going to talk about, out of all those things that I get forgiveness for and what I'll do an hour from now that's wrong, that God will graciously, free gift hand to me a, a forgiveness for. Uh, my big, greedy, selfish part is holding on to this world because I want to see my son grow. Uh, my daddy died when I was 11 years old. I just turned 11. My daddy's daddy, my grandfather, died when my daddy was 11 years old. You had two broken people. Broken little boys. In despair, right? And... I greedily and in my selfishness, that's one thing I'm very selfish with, I want to stay here for my son Joe. I want to see him grown. I, I want to exit out when it's convenient for him, not when it's convenient for me. So maybe there's a portion of that that's not selfish. Uh, the, the church houses are full, full of people that are clinging to all the evil of this earth because they just don't want to leave here. They'll sit and try to convince you and tell you till the sun comes home or till the cows come home that they, that they believe in Christ and they'll sit and tell you I'm saved and they'll sit and tell you, uh, uh, all my glory's waiting for me in heaven, yet they don't want to go there. The biggest thing about them is not wanting to go be with God. That's how you spot a blind person as well. There's tens of thousands of them in the pulpits in the United States and England. Can't speak for everywhere else, but I'm convinced that they're there. Why can't I speak for everywhere else? Because I don't speak their languages. But I know all through North America and all English speaking nations, they're riddled with them. As a matter of fact, probably nine and a half, if you did the statistics on it, one half of the person, nine and a half, the, the people sitting there trying to sell you their cockamamie crap 
uh, doesn't believe it themselves, and uh, which claiming to stay down here themselves. Now, just just think about that for a few minutes. These people that come around tell you they're on television constantly. Uh, they tell you, give to me and God's going to give back to you. Yet they don't give. Uh, and look at what all they got. See, it's time to open the eyes, people. This Joel Osteen guy, they're all over the place. Kenneth Copeland, that Joyce Meyer who looks like the Joker. I mean, God's just deforming her face and her body to show you all who she is. And most of you still can't get it. And they're living up here in these mansions and uh, sickening. It's everything. And, and another thing about Christ, you don't realize he went to the church, he pulled out a whip and started whipping people and cursing people. So what Jesus are they teaching you in church? Why was he whipping these people? Because they were doing business and they were greedily racking up money to take inside that place for God. But it wasn't Christ, the Son of God, the Son part of God. So you're just getting it from every direction, every direction. And all these things that when I was a little boy that preachers did talk about, as a matter of factly, openly talk about, they told us there'll be man marrying man, woman marrying woman, there'll be people uh, in practicing bestiality, uh, they will be uh, promoting the molestation of children. And where are we at? Women walking around claiming to be men, men claiming to be women. And if you dare, in the end time, in that day, if you dare say anything against it, you will be labeled the bigot. They actually preached the Bible a little bit more. Not all of it, but they preached a little bit more of it uh, when I was a young man. And uh, we're there. We're at that time. And there was nobody setting up in the church house when I was a little boy thinking, wow, well, that sounds about right. Everybody was sitting there shocked, stunned to hear these things and say, they will actually tell another man or another woman that they are bigots because they are against sexual immorality, that they are uh, uh, against bestiality, that they are against child uh, molestation they will actually say we're the bigots to speak up against that and nobody could comprehend that they're like wow it's going to be bad for these people at the end oh wow and you're kind of thinking well that's got to be another thousand years in the future that's how foreign that kind of thought was to somebody my age that's how foreign it was and in just the span of a little lifetime here, in my little lifetime, that's where we're at. So you young people, you got to be careful. You ain't, you ain't got no truth from the, start, from the start of yourself. You've gotten zero truth. You've gotten a bunch of false science. Yeah, go look up false science in the Bible. Go look that up. Uh, you've gotten and you got a wonderful tool that you can use. You can just turn on the internet and Google it or Microsoft it or whatever, Yahoo it, and uh, go right to it. Right? You got the truth at your fingertips, yet you don't want it. Be careful. You don't want to be one of the ones that God has blinded. Trust me on that. You do not want to be one of those ones. People, uh, friends, guys that I look to, to, guys I really admire in the boxing community. One guy, well, I want to believe in God, but, and I still consider this guy a friend. But here a good while back, he's talking, maybe talking to another 
professional boxer. He says, I want to believe in God. Uh, but the whole Noah's Ark thing just prevents me from doing that. It just knocks me away. Now I've tried to tell this guy, you need to go look. Because you're listening to a bunch of fools who have told you a bunch of false science. Maybe you've been blinded. Be careful with that. There's uh, zero reason of why somebody should get hung up on that flood. You go look at the science of that flood. Just like this environmental bull crap is, has been just tore to pieces. You know, they called it global warming. That's all I heard coming through from the early 1970s. Global warming. Uh, that wasn't working. They seen the temperature was going down in many areas of the world, and the global temperature was just like this constantly, right? So as the years went on and they had more to measure it by, uh, and the lies of what the temperature they thought in many areas and things was the past, they had to change it from global warming to climate change. Now, why would they change it to climate change? Because the climate's always been changing, folks. Uh, the carbon up here, uh, let's go there, which will get us right around in Noah's flood, uh, time periods and things like that. And it fits perfect with the science. So getting hung up on Noah's flood is for a foolish man. It's actually for an un uh, uh, un uneducated or an educated man that lacks wisdom is who that would be for, to get hung up on Noah's flood. Uh, the carbon on the earth was a lot more. I don't have the figures sitting in front of me, and y'all know my memory's not that good, but I, I remember what I put thousands of hours into studying. I remember all the outlines of everything I've studied. Uh, be it law or be it sciences or anything, be it, uh, the Bible, anything I've stuck my mind to. Uh, you go back, you look, the carbon rates were skyrocketed. They are already, uh, they're able to do this with fish because they can control the environment for them uh, in, a, in a, uh, uh, a scientific setting. And they raise the carbon levels to what should kill these fish. And what ends up happening? These fish get two or three times larger. And that wasn't prehistoric uh, days. That was pre-flood days, folks. Uh, you got to look at the science of the flood. Uh, they've mapped so much of the ocean floor now. They now know you pull the oceans out of the earth and you look on the ocean floors. And the crevices are there where the water came up. See, the water came up and exploded up and then started raining down. And there was no rain uh, before the flood. That's true. But what can you expect from uh, allowing a certain small, small segment of the pop population to uh, steal uh, the colors of the rainbow and put them on the flag being proud of the bad that they do, the immoral, evil things that they do in their lust. See? So maybe the church really hasn't believed in, uh, and maybe, not the church, forget that, maybe people calling themselves Christians that allowed these people to do this that voted for people to make it law that they could just run around here and just mock God in front of your face. And to the point that you'll go down there and get in a parade with them. But yet you, you, you know Christ. Well, you do know Christ, but you just don't know the real Christ. And we're all stocked up on bullshit up in this house. And I'm going to tell you something. I, you ain't going to get it here. I'm an old man. You're going to get the truth. They want to come lock me up. And here's what's coming next, folks. Here's what's coming next. Let me tell you something. You know you're doing right when God puts obstacles all up in front of you. You know you're doing right when this world is trying to break you down and crumble you. 
right? Only area of our lives as I rear a future world champion rocket scientist inside my home. The only obstacles we get are obstacles to, to stop him from physically improving his body. It's not him and it's not me. It's people getting in front of us. Problems at the gymnasium. Problems with people outside of it. Problems, problems, problems. Cheaters. This, that, the other thing. Uh, but it's not him and it's not me. And uh, well, how do you know? It's your most bold statement. You know about what your son's here. How do you know? Uh, here's a fool with a false Christ. This is what they'll tell you. Well, you know, uh, he could get 17 and go off here and get hooked on drugs. Really? He could? I don't think so. I know he won't. God told me how to rear my son, and I've reared him accordingly. Accordingly. Not perfectly, but accordingly. And God has gave the promise. He'll never bear off and go over there and do this or do that. It just won't happen. It just won't happen. Never have to worry of him picking up a cigarette, picking up a marijuana, picking up crack, picking up cocaine or drugs or pain pills. I've got no fear in any of that. God's going to rear him up. He'll be the success that, that I was promised that if I did in the Bible that he would be. Now he'll be challenged. And he gets challenged regularly. Uh, try to beat him down to no end. Uh, they're trying to take me out so he so he doesn't have the proper rearing of a father, which is the most important for a child. A mother is a nurturer. A father is a teacher and a provider of wisdom and knowledge. That's the way that works. Well, we don't do that. Now. Well, of course you don't. Of course you've got a Christ, but it's not the real Christ. It's the false Christ. So be careful. Be careful. Maybe God's blinded you. And see, at that point, there's no hope for you. Uh, this is not talked about in church. John 3.16 will not be for you. If God has blinded you, you'll have a John 3.16, but it won't be to get to the true and real Christ. How could it be? She ain't going to hear that in church. Two of the most unsafest places in the world to be is in a hospital if you're trying to live and in a church house if you're trying to live eternally in this day and time. The Bible talked about it. Half of our Christians worship a foreign country in North America and, and in the United Kingdom and Australia. Half of our Christians worship a foreign country with a false people than they do God himself and Christ himself. Be careful. Be careful. Young people, if you go to church, go to church. But you keep that Bible open. You hear that preacher saying something. First off, if it's a woman, you know there's nothing spiritual. God's not there. Number two, if it's a man, everything they say Go and verify it with the Bible. Don't listen to the bull hockey going around. Don't listen to mom and dad who love, you know, bacon or dad going and buying things for the the afternoon church shin digs or the bowling church bowling league or all this we're getting together. You know, all this socialization. 
for half these people. It's a social club over God. And they all have something in common. They have the considered uh, God quality, form of God in their niceness and their sweetness and their kindness. You want something on your hands? You get a bunch of real Christian men together and you got something on your hands. Because let me tell you people something. They're strong. They're old man strong. Even their kids will be old man strong. We are prepared for the fight and we will fight it. Be it physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever comes our way. We are the most beat down. We come off drugs. We come off alcohol. Uh, we come through physical deformities. We're the guy that was too small, the guy that was too fat, the guy that was too tall. We are the toughest people going today. That's who we are. That's where we come from. And we got through it all. And we get through every single hour of every single day because we are not perfect. And God is here for us because we are sick and because we love the Lord. Be careful what you choose to believe. Don't be one of the ones that God has blinded. There ain't no getting out of that blindness. You fools. And yeah, I said it. We are in a time. We are there, folks. And here's another one for you foolish folks that probably you've been blinded. All this crap that you're going to get up, the church is going to get up and poof up into heaven. You've been terribly misled. Nobody's going anywhere. Christ even said it himself in the book of Matthew. You ain't nobody getting up and disappearing and poofing off nowhere. And the Bible does not say that anywhere. There's transformation of the bodies that will happen, but this is going to happen at the end. The Armageddon, where the real Christians are going to be with God and we are going to fight with God. Where the real Christ is going to come down and create so much death and have it uh, getting rid and ravaging the evil one and his minions, which will be the blinded people and people that chose to be bad, that the blood's going to come up to the bridle, the chin of the horse he is on. So you be careful what they're telling you. You be careful of this loving thing that these false Christ worshipers are trying to get you to worship. Because God has no love for evil people and this evilness. And we are pulling up on the end time age. There's a fight coming. And there'll be one out of 20,000 men, maybe one out of 100,000 men, that'll be a real soldier fighting soldier for Christ. The rest of them will be, hey, let me love you and get their heads chopped off. There will be those of us that will be fighters that will gladly put our heads on the chopping block because we're not going to deny Christ. The ones that will are the ones that's walking around telling everybody, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. In the book of Malachi, they say, adorn with the purple and gold, the preachers. All those people, they'll deny Christ just like that. The ones that's out here falling down and stumbling all the time, those of us that aren't perfect, we won't. I'd take my, aunt, my, my old ass down there right now and my son would go with me and our heads would go on that block and I would hope they'd face our heads towards one another because I'd tell my son, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll be together in glory. And I'd believe every ounce of it. And I believe my son would too. It's 
So don't tell me. Don't come to me with none of this worldly crap. You don't know what your son will do. Yeah, I do know what my son's going to do. While my son is under my tutelage, while my son is listening to the values that I put forth to him, uh, while my son is with me, he is going to be a good, good man. God has given those promises. God has told us how to raise and rear our children. And I've raised and reared him accordingly. And he will uh, be the beneficiary accordingly to God's promises. Not a, dipl- not, not a complicated process here. Nothing complicated about it at all. You don't need a damn psychologist to come up with it. And let me tell you something. Fellow strong Christian man and woman. You get beat down every day. You fall down. You stumble. Maybe you go back to the drink. Maybe you go back to the drug. Uh, Maybe you get mad at Jane or John over there. Uh, We always are falling down. And we'll continue to do so, but we will win the battle at the end. Like Paul says, may you shine like a star in the universe. You fought the good fight. There'd be nothing ugly coming at you. You you wouldn't be falling down continually. Uh, You wouldn't be in uh, constant despair moments or worrying about what the guy up there, the girl down there is doing, what they're plotting against you. Uh, what are they saying about you? What are they doing against you? What is what's the plots going on here? What are they trying to do to me or my family? Wouldn't nobody be doing nothing to you if you cling to this world? Loving Christ is not a walk in the park. It's a fight. Loving Christ, you've got to be a soldier. You got to fight the good fight and you're going to mess up. But the good thing is God didn't come for those perfect folk over there. They're blind. He came for folks like you and me. And remember that. So you young people, if you're in a church today, you be very careful what's going on around you. You look, you verify with the Bible. If you are in a household that's confusing you, and drawing you over there to uh, shysters. Maybe, maybe you live with a family of shysters. Maybe they are the parasite on the back sucking the life's blood out of the working man while they're laying back and work two hours a day and get to run off on all these retreats, sucking the life out of a working man. That ain't God. That ain't what God ever intended, ever wanted, or is pleased with today. The church is falling away, folks. You and I, the damaged products. You and I, the unperfect people. You and I, the ones they condemn constantly. And attack constantly. We're the church. That be us. That be us. So, there's a lot of things I didn't talk about here. Really, in the beginning of this thing, I was going to go through a lot of scientific things to just really concrete let you know man did live hundreds of years a long time ago. I was going to give you the science behind that that's been discovered. Uh, The science of the flood and that. The only thing that fits is the flood, global flood, the whole earth being flooded, uh, not a local flood. Uh, And just get down to the real nitty gritty. I was going to talk about the uh, angels that came down and mated with women and spawned off these uh, uh, men men of renown, men of old, the giants that the Bible talks about that were devouring man. And that's why the flood came. And I was going to talk about a lot of these other things, but it just didn't didn't happen. So I want you to know 
that it, it, it is my sincere hope that if you've been walking blind worshiping a false Christ that has this fake phony love to it uh, this worldly love to it that Something in here will get you to go to investigate and learning on your own. God is love. Christ, God is love. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is love. But folks, it's not a worldly love that you nor I can understand. At all. See? It's just not. And there's no conflict in the Bible. Certain things God had people do because of certain times and certain situations. And those, all those, none of those things changed with Christ. The thing that came to us was forgiveness. The thing that came to us at that point was a Holy Spirit that can envelop us. But this weird, sick, false Christ love that's not real love, that preaches tolerance that's not real tolerance, that preaches against discrimination but yet discriminates against everybody, that's not real. If you... It, you don't want to be the one, one of the ones that God puts the blinders on where you can't see. Walking in a form of godliness, yet not knowing God. And the world's full of those today. So be careful. Pick a Bible up. Don't take my word for it. And understand that although you will get peace with the Lord, uh, you ain't getting a paved road of gold uh, with the traffic lights set for you to be on go all the time, uh, never being stopped on this earth, your treasures will be stored up in heaven, not earth. You'll run into a lot of chaos and confusion, a lot of people coming against you, but God will give you an inner strength and an inner peace and an inner ability, inner ability to continue the good fight and get through everything that's slung at you. That old devil cannot win against you if you are walking with the true Christ. Biggest problem today, people walking with the fake phony Christ, with that false fake love that is a, a snaring trap it's a trap almost like a gold digging woman trying to marry a rich man. She, everything she's got is appealing that she offers this man, but she don't love this man. She's just digging the essence out of him, which his essence was making money. See? You live with this world, you're going to die with it. You got, you got to learn and got to figure out how to separate your spiritual self from this worldly self. In the blink of an eye, you and I are going to be gone. And all of this is going to be like an illusion because it's not real. This is not eternity. You can't wrap your head around eternity, nor can I. Be careful out there that you're not blinded. Get down on your hands and knees and meet the true Christ. The Christ that suffered. And you'll be suffering too if you follow him. Pick your cross up. Put it on your back. Carry that load and fight the good fight. Do the right things. Be the best you can be in all your imperfectness. and all your sorriness. and all your ignorance. That's all we can do, folks. Learn, look for the lies, explore for the truth. Love to folks out there. I hope at least one person listens to this and gets it. I really, really do.